Girl Sews, my name's Sarah, thanks for joining me today. I decided today that I would show you a roundup of the things that I'm planning on making for spring. Um, so the first thing I want to make for spring I'm actually wearing here, and I haven't got any photos of this yet, I'm going to show you these nice big sleeves. I talked about this on a previous vlog and I will get some pictures up for you. Um, this is the Pattern Emporium balloon sleeve top. Um, and the fabric is a crinkle viscose. Again, you might see it better here in the sleeve. If I can get this straight, there you go. Um, with these sort of cute little um, ancient Greek or ancient Roman illustrations all over it. Um, now, I actually only purchased this pattern on the recommendation of some of my lovely viewers. So I was looking for something to sew this pattern, this fabric up in, and I was struggling because of the texture of it so and also because it's got such a busy pattern so I didn't want to be sewing something up with lots of seams um the pattern's pretty drapey and also because it's crinkled it stretches um quite a bit so I just wanted something fairly simple but that would show off the print nicely and I have to say I'm pretty into this um I need to look into a few things with it so like the shoulder is a bit like it's a bit wide on the shoulder, but I haven't actually checked whether it's supposed to fit snug on your shoulder. So if it were fitting actually on my shoulder, it'd be here. But obviously you can see it's dropped. So I just need to check the design um, and see, because also partly I think the fabric, as I said, it has a lot of give in it. So I'm going to sew this blouse up again in, I think, a cotton lawn. And I'm just going to see how that changes it. Um, the fabric was an absolute pain. It was a pain. To cut it was a pain. To sew it was a pain. To wear it's quite nice. Um, and it doesn't fray loads or anything, so that makes it easier. It just, I mean, it's a crinkle viscose. So imagine all of the movement of your normal viscose and then add in the crinkle element. Um, and yeah, oh my God, cutting it. Absolute nightmare. But I've ended up with a nice blouse, which is nice. So thank you so much for everyone who recommended this pattern to me. I think if I picked anything more involved than this, I would have really struggled because of the limitations of the fabric. And I feel good because I've used something up that has been in my stash for a while. And that is quite a tricky fabric to use. So thank you so much for letting me make this into something that I can actually wear. And I will wear because I do really like it. Um, the pattern itself, I've never used a Pattern Emporium pattern before, but I really liked it. It was really clearly laid out. The way to take measurements was very clear. They also have, they, they don't describe it as cup sizes. They describe it as you can pick pattern pieces that have um, full bust adjustments done. So there's the, the average size and then there's full bust adjustment one, full bust adjustment two, blah, 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 which is just, I guess, the same as having cup sizes. Um, but that makes the fitting much easier. This is uh, quite a loose fit top, and especially because of the fabric, it's extra flowy. Um, keep an eye on future vlogs. If I do a Friday sew next week, I'll pop it in there with some clearer pictures. But I just wanted to mention it since I'm wearing it, and it was the first sort of spring type make that I had planned. So what else have I got planned? I have one, two, three, four, five, six projects that I want to talk to you about um, that I'm hoping to get finished in the next few weeks. Now, as you know, at the moment, I'm not buying fabric, but I have, I've sort of got on top of a lot of my brand projects um, and then suddenly I'm snowed under again. So I've got to get on top of them, but I've got some really good fabrics to show you um, and some really nice patterns to sew up. So. First of all, I'm not going to show you the fabric for this because it is white and it is toweling and I'm too scared to take it out of the bag because I think it's just going to get dirty if I even look at it. So I need to, yeah, keep it enclosed because there's just dog hair in the atmosphere here. There's dog hair everywhere. So I need to find like a vacuum space where I can cut it out. Um, but I have this white toweling which I was given by Minerva a little while ago. Um, and my plan was to make myself a toweling robe. I think I'm going to use the Veronic pattern by Closet Core. I use them to make a robe for my wedding. Again, how bad am I? I haven't got photographs of that still. So that's a job for me. Um, <laughs> but uh, that was a silky sort of um, robe that I made. And this is going to be a more traditional robe. And the thing that sort of started this off for me 
was when we were on our mini moon, we went to a spa and they didn't have any robes. The robes were all tiny. Like I could get into one, but it was like boobs were out. It was not good. So, um, and I was chatting to the lady there and she said, oh, we actually get the biggest sizes, but they're just not available in like in, they obviously mass order them. And I think they're probably made abroad. Um, I presume somewhere where people are generally a bit smaller. So the biggest size is like not very big. So I just thought, I'm going to make myself one. So I'm going to use a Veronic robe, or at least I'm going to use the base of that, and then I might tweak it. Um, if it, if I think it looks like it's not going to work, I do also have, from when I was a Closet Core member, Closet Core had a, a robe pattern as well. So that is also an option if I think this one's not going to work. But um, I will put up the Veronic robe here. It's always been made, as far as I've seen, in lighter fabrics. That's why I'm not quite sure... But I think the shape could be transferred. And if not, as I said, I think it's the Ligon, Ligon robe or something um, is the cashmere one. So um, I have both, but I will be making a robe of some sort in white toweling. So it will look like a spa robe. And that means it's a bulky thing to take, but it just means if I'm going for a spa weekend or something, I'm not stressing about not being able to fit into the robe. Um, and I've also ordered, they haven't come yet, but I've ordered some um, gold embroidered, they're like cursive initials, so SQ, which are technically my new initials, although I've not officially changed my name yet because I don't want to pay for a new passport. <laughs> so, and also I still have a, like the burgundy passport and I just want to hold on to it for a bit longer. And now we've booked our honeymoon in that name, so I have to keep it until at least our honeymoon in October. Um, but yeah, so I've bought these little iron-on patches, so I'll iron them on and then stitch them on, just to give it a bit of a luxe feel. Um, and I ordered them from Etsy and they haven't arrived yet. Now, I'm planning on hopefully getting these sewn up for my birthday weekend. So my birthday is actually on a Wednesday. Nathan is taking me away um, just really quite, we're not going very far, but just to a little hotel um, in the countryside near us just for two nights so I thought it'd be quite nice to have the robe ready for then I don't think it even has a spa but I also thought I could get some nice pictures and then I can take it to a spa afterwards so I'm hoping to get that done for March it's looking a little bit optimistic to be honest but we'll see um now after that I have some slightly more traditionally spring like projects um to show you so one of them is for the Jenny Stitches blog um, and I've been eyeing up this fabric for absolutely ages. Like she's had it since last year and I thought it would sell out. I love, I, I think the colours are quite bright and I think they're maybe not for everyone, but they are for me. So that's fine. So um, I've been eyeing this up and I thought someone else would do it on the blog or like it would all sell out. And I had a look recently and it's still there. Um, and so I just sort of said, could I do a blogger project with that fabric, please? Um, and we talked back and forth about what to make. I've decided to make the Tilly and the Buttons Mabel. Um, you'll all know the Mabel. It had a, a big moment last summer. Um, and I made two of these dresses last year in a much lighter colour palette. <clears throat> and they were my two most liked Instagram posts of last year. So it was a really popular, um, really popular pattern. And it's actually really quick to sew. There are lots of things like because the ties on the front are faux ties, um, and the shearing actually doesn't take very long and makes the fitting a lot easier. It comes together actually really quickly. Um, yeah, so it's one of those where it looks like there's a lot going on, but there's it's actually deceptively simple. So the fabric I have chosen, it's cotton lawn. And this is the print. Oh, I love it. And I think it looks so nice with me. <laughs> That sounds weird, doesn't it? But the colours, I love these sorts of colours, reds and pinks and that blue. Um, the quality is gorgeous. Like, this is why I'm surprised that it's... Because as soon as it came in, I was like, I love that print and I love those colours. Um, I didn't really know what to make with it. So I think that's maybe because it's so bright, maybe people are a bit like, hmm. So I'm hoping if I make it up into a lovely Mabel dress that, um, that other people will sort of maybe go and snap it up too because it's so pretty. Um, yeah, it's got a nice bit of drape. It's super smooth. Oh, and the colours. And also, it's a lot of my fabrics here to show you are florals. Um, but this is like, it's like a medium scale floral. And it looks like they're like painted. 
it's like the the when you look close up they are in fact I, I presume they are painted but really gorgeous so that is going to be um a really nice dress the only thing I can't decide at the moment is whether I want to make when I asked for it I was thinking of making the long sleeves because then I was thinking it would be a bit more wearable for like shoulder season shoulder season so I could wear it into the autumn and then I could wear it in the spring rather than the shorter sleeves which are a bit more summery but I don't know I don't know if it's gonna be too much with the long sleeves I'm not sure let me know what you think long or short sleeves I've only made it with short sleeves before um I think it's probably more practical with the longer sleeves but I'm just worried because the print and, and the colors are so bright that it would just be a bit too much and that you might need a bit more skin let me know what you think long or short sleeves let me know below um okay so the next project sorry I have my list here and I keep covering it up with other things um anyone who's followed me for a few months will know that I made the fabric godmother peony dress at the end of last year um I made it in this I'll pop a picture here if I remember to uh I made it in the also fabric godmother viscose jacquard hmm I feel like it's a viscose jacquard but this is also a viscose jacquard and they felt very different anyway um the green um like zebra print fabric that everyone was using the dress is gorgeous the fabric was a pain and that's why I'm saying this fabric feels completely different to that so um maybe it wasn't a viscose jacquard um but the fabric is gorgeous but I just frayed and I had this whole drama with the back of the skirt where I was trying to straighten something out and then all the fabric just disintegrated and then I had to put a little patch in and a little drama very stressful um and generally I love the dress but I do feel like the shape of the skirt was a bit boxy on me um I got a good fit on the bodice but there was something in the skirt shape where I was just like just for my body shape right now it wasn't quite I don't think it was the best fit so I had been thinking of making a version with a gathered tiered skirt so keep the bodice exactly as is and then have not a massive skirt but just a skirt with a bit more movement so that I feel like I've got a bit more shape um and I then saw that someone else had done this hack on Instagram and it looked so good so um that's encouraged me to do it so I've actually got another um fabric on mother fabric I don't know why I'm always drawn to these for that for that dress but um it is this one so this was I think this might have been from it might have been from their valentine's collection last year maybe um Again, I think it's it's florals, but it's like not a traditional floral. And I mean, is it florals? When you look close up, it just looks like a load of blobs. But I think it is floral. Um, it, you've got this nice, this red and this purple, and then a sort of like beige colour in the background. You've got loads of drape. Um, it will be slightly less dressy than the other one I made. So the green, the emerald green one is really dressy. Like the fabric is very dressy, and the the pattern and the fabric together make for like a special occasion dress. Apart from the fact that it's a big mess at the back. Not going to be a mess at the back this time. Um, so yeah, and this has a very slight... You've probably seen this before. I don't know if it's going to pick it up on the camera. But the jacquard is just like little dots. There are little jacquard dots all the way through. Um, but I think it's going to be pretty. I'm hoping that that's the sort of thing... I have got a wedding in May. So if it turns out really nice, I might wear it for the wedding in May. Um, or... I also thought it's something that I could wear for like a smart day at work. So if there's a concert at school or something, I could wear that. Um, yes. So that's that. Right. Next up. Now, I was approached the other week by a pattern company called Copper Creek Patterns. Um, I'm not sure exactly where the line is because the Copper Creek thing is quite new, but it's part of the Dibby Club, which is Do It Better Yourself Club which has been going for a while with patterns. Now they have loads of interesting patterns. They have some free patterns. They have men's patterns, women's patterns, children's patterns. Um, they have a lot of patterns for like athleisure and leisure wear, as well as some other things. And they contacted me to ask if I would be a tester. Um, and I'm not doing loads of testing at the moment, <coughs> just because the nature of my work means it can be quite difficult for me to commit to like a really, um, strict time frame um because stuff comes up and I just can't get it done in that time so then when I said that to them they were like well do you want to become part of our brand ambassador club instead and what that means is I basically get to pick a pattern they give it to me and then I make it up and review it and then I can get another pattern whenever I want to but the time frame's a lot more relaxed now it happened that in the sale 
um, for by Graziella Fabrics at Christmas. I purchased some lovely, now sold out, French terry in this, not very me colour of light blue, but I thought it was cute and I like the print. Um, and I wanted to make a zip up hoodie. So I wear a lot when I'm not working because I have to sort of dress up for work. I wear a lot of like relaxed clothing um, on my days off so that I can just get on with things and just be comfy and cosy. Um, and I wanted a zip up hoodie, which I don't really have at the moment, but I couldn't settle on a pattern and I was just like umming and ahhing. And then I got this email about Copper Creek Patterns and I had a look on their website and they have loads of different sweatshirt style patterns, including several different zip zip up top patterns. So I was like, this will be perfect. Um, now it came down to two. They have one zip up top that is a more traditional one. Um, and that pattern's really cool because you can, it comes in loads of variations so you can have it longer or mid-length or really cropped you can have it with a zip without a zip with a hood with a pocket without you know it's it's like a, a basic hoodie pattern that you can really edit very easily um i'll put a link to that pattern down below um now i am part of the affiliate link scheme i haven't worked out how to use it so if i work out <laughs> if i work out how to use it i'll put an affiliate link below um but i might not work it out in which case i'll just put a normal link and we'll all just go on living our lives um it's one of those things where people ask, do you want to do the affiliate link thing? And I'm like, sure. And then I'm like, I don't know how this works. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, so the pattern I chose is called the Junko hoodie. I'll pop a picture of it here. Um, I went back and forth between the two. This one, I think it's got a slightly more oversized fit. Um, and I liked the feature with the funnel neck and the option to have the, the little zip. Um, so the option to have it without a hood because I haven't decided if I want the hood or not um so it just gives you a couple of options and I just thought it was a bit of a more interesting silhouette so I thought oh let's give that a go um so yeah I'll do a review for that but that's that sort of um even though I've done hoodies and I've done zip up jackets I think you saw my Andy's jacket by itch to stitch I've not done it like feels like taking the two together feels like a big thing um it also has some zip up pockets it just feels like it's going to be super practical and i also think there's a little key pocket you can put in like a secret pocket for your keys which goes in the sleeve so um yeah it's got lots of like nice features which is why i decided to pick that over the more simple hoodie pattern um but yeah so this is my first time using their patterns i have come across a couple of them before um i think it was the blanket hoodie pattern there was another one that I've I've come across before um but yeah I've not used their patterns before so I'm really excited to try that out and let you know how it goes um but yes I bought the fabric the pattern was given to me um for an honest review you know I always give you honest reviews so uh right then I have two more two dresses now these are both fabrics that I've been given by Minerva and I have to say they're really nice I actually only asked for one fabric this month but they sent me two um and so what you do with the Minerva brand ambassador thing is they send you a link each month and they say, send us a list of fabrics from this selection and then we'll send you one back. So they want you to send a few because obviously if someone else has picked one, it means that they can just go down the list. Um, and yeah, I got a response from this time. They were like, we're going to send you your first choice and your third choice. So, yeah, so I've got an extra one and I've been thinking what to do with them, but I've got good plans now and I'm quite excited. Um, so the first one is a pattern that I bought the other day and it's called the Willow Dress and it's by Cinnamon Daisy. Now, I love the look of this and I'm now seeing it absolutely everywhere. So I don't know if I'm just noticing it because I bought it or if everyone's noticed it at the same time. But it's a really pretty dress. It's got these this sort of tie detail at the waist. It's very like, I'd say like cottage core vibes, really pretty. Um, and the fabric that I have from Minerva to make this dress is this viscose fabric. Um, so it's a navy background, but it's a really dark navy background and it has these mustard florals on it. Let me hold it a bit closer. Um, again, they're, they're quite irregular, which I like. Like the, the pattern is they're sort of, in these little clusters which I think is pretty and what I love about this too as my first attempt at this pattern is the silhouette is a very sort of traditionally feminine pattern like as I said it's cottage core it's very like you've got the puff sleeves and you've got this pretty little waist with the bows and a nice skirt and everything um 
and I quite fancy making it for the first time in this fabric which is because it's, it's on a darker base and it's not too like out there again I'm hoping that might make it more wearable um I have a tendency I mean I love I loved everything I made last year but I'll make some summer dresses that are actually a lot of the time I'm at work and I need to wear certain things and I want to make sure that I have a choice of me maids that I can wear when I'm teaching in a school and obviously there are certain requirements and something like this where the fabric's a bit drapey and a bit darker I think I could probably style that for school in that dress so um that's one of my plans a willow dress I'll make sure if I haven't already I'll pop some pictures up of the design of that dress up here um I think that's gonna be really pretty and then the last one so one of the fabrics I asked for was a viscose linen now I started sewing with viscose linen I think it was only last year um and I love love it like it takes you get the sort of um the beauty of the linen but it takes a lot of the stress all of the creasing and everything out so you sort of get the breathability and you get that generally like that nice summertime look but it's just more wearable I think so um and Minerva have their own exclusive range of prints and one of the bases is a viscose linen so I used I think it was their Bumble Cottage or something to make a Penelope dress last year and um so I was having a, a cruise through and I found this print which I think is a newer print I don't remember seeing this last time um so I'm going to show it to you it's this Ooh, don't make a mess of that there we go so it's this beautiful sort of it's sort of a ditzy floral but there are some quite big flowers on there actually when I hold it up it's but it's I mean it's gorgeous isn't it it's like really pretty um I had thought of making the eucalyptus jumpsuit which is a um pattern by deer and doe but again I was looking at it and I was thinking realistically how much are you going to wear a whole jumpsuit in that pattern and this is what I am trying to be a bit more sensible in the things I'm making make sure I get wearability out of them rather than just making something because I think it's cool and then being like I can actually not wear this on any occasions so um I talked myself out of that and instead I'm going to make the luli dress which is a paper cut patterns um, dress I'll pop it up here it's actually quite a simple silhouette I think the back is really pretty um it sort of reminds me of a mix of um is it the Estella the Estella pattern which is a paper cut patterns um pattern where you can make a dress or you can make like a co-ord set um and I've made the co-ord set version before um it has some similarities to that I think but obviously it's a bit different um but I thought that'd be nice in a linen again I think the neckline at the front is quite high. So depending on the choices that I make for the back of it, um, I think I could probably get away with wearing that a bit more than a jumpsuit. Um, yeah, so that was my thinking, like a dress in that I thought would be really cute. And I might have a bit left, if I have enough left over, um, I think this would be a really nice fabric to make um, some summer dresses, maybe for my goddaughter, one of my goddaughters, too many goddaughters, not too many. There's not too many, I love them all. And I always welcome more into the clan, more godchildren. Um, so yeah, so those are my plans for the spring. I tend to go a bit off piste, but at the moment I'm trying not to because I'm not really shopping. Um, I will be shopping in March, but already I'm just looking. I organised my stash the other day. I've got so much. It's a bit overwhelming, actually. So I think when we move back into our house, I think I'm going to do a de-stash. Um, because I've got some fabrics here that I think I'm probably not going to sew up. And I'm also sure I've got some in storage that I'm also not going to sew up. So I think I'll do a big old D stash. But I am trying to just get on top of what I've got and um, pick from what's here. So my plan is to sew these up. And then for summer, I've got quite a few summer fabrics here. I'm hoping that I actually don't have to buy that many. So when I'm at the Stitch Festival, the things I'm going to be looking for, I want, a, I want to make a skirt or some big swishy trousers that are plain in either black or navy so that I can wear some of my pattern blouses like this blouse to work because at the moment I don't really have anything quite right to pair a lot of my pattern blouses with um I also am maybe looking for some bits for honeymoon stuff because over the summer I'm going to be sewing lots of summer wardrobe but I'm going to also be thinking okay what from this can I take when we go to Italy in October um but yeah, I've got a few fabrics actually in there that I think will work fine. The one thing I haven't mentioned actually for my spring sewing 
is the So Yellow for Endo, my So Yellow for Endo project. There'll be a separate vlog for that. I'm on the vlogger tour for it. So um, there'll be a separate vlog where I talk through. I've got actually quite a few fabrics with yellow in. So I'm going to show my different fabrics and then I'm going to pick one and then I'm going to make it into something. I have from the very yellow to just a touch of yellow. So I've got one that's like yellow and then I've got one that's like mostly yellow and then I have a few that have just like bits of yellow in. So we're just going to go through some ideas. Are you doing So Yellow for Endo? Also, who's going to the So Yellow for Endo party um, at So Me Sunshine on, I'm going to say Saturday the 23rd. I'm going the 23rd. That might be the wrong date. But the Stitch Festival weekend on the Saturday. Um, I'm going to Stitch Festival on the Sunday, but I will be going to the party on the Saturday because I can go after work. So, um, yeah, if, if you're going to be there, do let me know so that I can start putting faces to names and things. Um, I'd love to meet you. And equally, if you end up at the Stitch Festival on Sunday, um, please do come and say hello. I'm there with my friend Sophie, who I came with, went with last year as well. She's not a sewer, but she's a very crafty, artsy person. Um, and she really enjoyed it. So she's coming with me again. Um, but yeah, I'll talk to you about that before then. It's ages away. It's like a whole month away. Um, great. I'm babbling again. So thank you so much for joining in. Let me know what your plans are for sewing um, up for spring. Some of these will carry over to summer. So I think if I don't get some of them done, I'll still probably do them into the summer. So, so I think I'm going to prioritise the ones that I think I won't wear so much in the summer. Maybe just so I can get those done first. Um, but yeah, that's it for me. All right, have a great week, guys. See you later. Bye.